Uh, good evening, everybody. Give everybody a chance to come into the live. I don't know what's wrong with this phone, man. I've been trying to get on here and do this and do that. I just don't get it. I'm Broken Sylvia. How you doing this evening? I messed up on the YouTube thing. I can't have to go back the other way. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay, I got you. As long as you can hear me, it's all matter. I want to say thank you for coming to my channel. My name is One of a Kind Vlog. If you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, cut on post notifications so you never miss a video, comment down below. Today, we're talking about Black History Month, and today I'm going to be talking about Jerry Lawson. Now, Jerry Lawson. Okay, thanks. Jerry Lawson brought interchangeable video games into people's homes with the invention of a Fairchild Channel F, the, the pro processor to a modem video game system. Okay, I can work with that. How you doing, a little bit? How you doing? Good to see you. In good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, who is Jerry Lawson? Jerry Lawson pioneered home video gaming in the 1970s by helping create a Fairchild Channel F, the first home video game system with interchangeable games. A New York native, Lawson is one of few African-American engineers who worked in computing at the dawn of the video game era. He was born in New York City on December the 1st, 1940. Gerald Anderson Lawson is famous for be being a video game pioneer, helping develop the first cartridge-based home video game console system. Who knew? The man did he, he, That's all right. Lawson's father was a longshoreman and his mother worked for New York City. He had one brother, Michael. Inspired as a kid by the work of George Washington Carver, Lawson dabbled in electronics growing up, repairing televisions to make a little money before enrolling at Queens College part of the City University of New York. His interest in computing led him in the 1970s to Silicon Valley Homebrew Computer Club, of which he was the only black member at the time while with the club. He crossed paths with Steve Jobs and Steve Wassenack, I think that's how you say it. In the interview, he referred to Jobs as a business-minded spark plug and recalled being unimpressed when he interviewed Steve for a job. Okay, okay. In the 1970s, Lawson's helped create the Fairchild Channel F, a home entertainment machine that was produced in the 1976 by Fairchild. Right now, I can't do that right now. I got a call coming in. Let's see. Other other years earlier, Mike, co-founder of Apple Computers, Inc., had headed marketing for the company. Though based by today's standards, Lawson's work 
allowed people to play a variety of games in their homes and paved the way for systems such as Atari 2600, Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. And that Atari 2600, that's the old one. That's the first. You find one of them, you got something on your hand. That's a collector's item. Let's see. One of the few black engineers in his in industry, Lawson later said that colleagues were often surprised to find out what he was, find out that he was American, African American with some people, it's become an issue. I've had people look at me with total shock, particularly if they hear my voice because they think that all black people have a voice that sounds a certain way and they know it and i sit there and go oh yeah well sorry i don't <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> let's see lawson died in mountain valley california on april the 9th 2011 due to complications related to his diabetes he was survived by his wife Catherine and two children. Now, diabetes, that's a whole new story. I'm about to tell y'all about that. Because I'm a diabetic type one. One. Let's see. Oh, that was it. Get out of here. Well, go to round two. Okay. See what y'all doing in the chat right here. Let me put my glasses on. Let me see. Can't hardly see. Let's see. Andrew Family A ASMR. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate all y'all being here. Y'all just make my day. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Just to sum it up, video games and animation. One of the very first cartridge-based video game system called oh, came from Gerald A. Lawson, Jerry, as he was called work at Fairchild. Let me see. In the 1970s, he also belonged to the Homebrew Computer Club uh, alongside Steve and Steve Jobs, while there Jerry helped invent. The Fairchild Channel F as pictured below. I ain't gonna show you that, but anyway. Let's see. Lisa helped develop early web animation that led to the advent of Shockwave. She also worked with online video via Hulu, Jaws, and Bright Code. I ain't never heard of that. Her work even took her to the White House, serving as Chief Digital Service Officer in the Department of Education. Some of the most famous animations in history came from Mark Hanna, having worked on icon Hollywood films like Jurassic Park, Mark co-founded Silicon Graphics in 1982. He also created unique programs include, including Indigo, Indie graphs and personal IRS. Well, who knew he they IRS? Okay, let me fix this camera. Now. Hold, on. Hold on a minute. There you go. Get the full picture, baby. Full thing. Okay. Let's see. Hannah's company teaching. Hannah's company technology helped create Terminator Two. The intro of Monday Night Football used his program, as well as various military, engineering, and research initiatives. The concept was good that 90% of microphones used today followed the original, original design. Other black inventors made forays into the audio visual world too. Furthermore, that has become modern day home security systems all started with a black woman. I didn't know that. I learned a lot. Well, let's see. Marie Van Britton Brown wanted to feel safer 
at home. She developed a home security system using peepholes, cameras, and radio control wireless system. The system relayed images to a monitor. It also enabled the person watching the monitor to communicate with the person being filmed via two-way microphones. A remote control also allowed Marie to lock or unlock door, unlock the door at a distance. This paved the way for modern closed circuit television and home security as we know it. Let's see. Small changes, revolutionized agricultural medicine and kitchen. Dr. Jane Cook Wright was the first African American woman to be elected as the president of the New York Council Society, making her the highest ranked African American woman at a national recognized medical institute. Dr. Wright is widely known in the medical community for her contribution to the development of chemo, it, chemotherapy treatment. She introduced the technology as of using human tissue cultures and test chemo therapeutic drugs instead of mice. Oh, that was smart. Dr. Rice also implanted a comprehensive program to study stroke, heart disease, and cancer, and create another program to instruct doctors in chemotherapy in the late 1960s. Let me see who in the chat, man. Let me see who in the chat. Who's in the chat? I need a little bit in there. Right. It's Griffin. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I know that's right. Black History Month. <laughs> we got Dana Dana up in the house. Woo -woo. How y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Yeah, it's a good, 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 good day. Okay. Glad to see y'all in here. Thank you very much. Let's see. Most people might know Charles Drew for his contribution to med tech is his short life of only 46 years. Charles revolutionized blood storage. His refrigerator, blood mobiles, stored blood at the temperature to prolong its self life. This further revolutionized blood storage and plasma banks for WW. Well, wait a minute, World War II. I'm sorry, WW2. <laughs> ah, oh my God. I'm thinking about wrestling. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Echoing Charles' legacy of refrigeration technique, John Standard painted an improvement to the refrigerator in 19. I mean, 1891, the non-electric solution used on ice field sections that shield contents before that in 19, 18, 1889, he also conceived an oil stove that conserved space. This made the stove top cooking method more versatile and available. Hmm. Now, who knew John was the one that Invented a stove top. Really though, who knew? I didn't know that. I know y'all didn't know it. If you did, you didn't tell me why. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> innovations like these count continued in other industries too. The key, the keen attention to accessibility, ceased to use and maintain yield major. Quality and life jumps. Historically, black inventors found ways to improve existing device devices to make life easier for everyone. Consider John Burke. Though he did not invent the lawnmower, he found a way to enhance it. Having worked as a farm equipment repairman and steel worker, John knew his way around machines. He devised a rotary blade mower, which was patented in 1898. His mower 
was more maneuverable, clawed less, and could not get a closer clip on glass on grass uh, blades. In fact, the design hasn't debated much compared to various manual rotary mowers still used today. Well, I'm gonna read these things. I can't read no more, baby. Doing here. Yeah, okay, thank y'all for coming. Thank y'all for coming. Let's see, way more than just the peanut butter guy. Joseph and John weren't the only black inventors involved in agriculture. George Washington Carver, though famous for his idea of peanut butter, did far more than that. Recruited by Booker T. Washington of the Tucker C.G. Institute, George did an extensive work and studied on agriculture. He wanted to find a way to damage Oh, man. He wanted to find a way to, I can't pronounce his word, so I don't even say it. The damage done to the, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. Some of these words, I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to say it. Uh, let me see what I was doing. The first step to rehabilitate the soil in southern farms, so George taught farmers about crop rotation and fertilization. After conducting studies on which crops thrive in various answers, his answers came in the form of peanut. As a result of his re research and work, peanuts emerged in more than 300 products. This move toward the shell lead not only helped the soil, it bettered the economic too. Who knew that? Peanut. What this dude, George Washington? Huh. One of the most iconic toys of the 1990s came from NASA engineer Lonnie Johnson. He worked on the Jet Propulsion, I think that's how you say it, laboratory in NASA on the Cassinian mission to Saturn and the Jupiter Galileo mission. He also survived, I mean, served in the Air Force. His current work focused on the Johnson Energy Converter. Thermoelectric, I'm sorry. Lonnie Lau aims to convert solar energy into electricity using his advanced heat engine with twice the efficiency of current methods. Lonnie continues a long history of African American advance in aerospace, phys physics, and even early 3D tech. Wow. Man, that's a lot, boy. I mean, they they doing it. They doing it, daggone thing. Who knew all this stuff? I mean, honestly, I didn't. I, I really didn't. I'm reading it right now and I'm getting excited over that thing. <laughs> oh, man. Let me see. George created the ultraviolet camera, also known as the spectrograph. NASA used this for the Apollo 16 flight in 1972. Now, I didn't know it because that's when I was born. They examined Earth's atmosphere due to its inherited abilities. NASA captured UV images of more than 550 galaxies and stars. Another George, George E. Alcorn, innovated in images X-ray tech in the form of a spectrometer. I uh, see of aluminum enabled the device to better show material compensation. Perhaps one of the most inter, in, inferential black scientists, Jess Ernest, Ernest Wilkins Jr., collaborated on a Manhattan project. He worked with Eugene Wagner, Wagner, what kind of name was that? To develop the Wilkins effort and the Wilkins, Wigner Wilkins spectrum. 
His work also involved the designs and develop of nuclear re reactors for the purpose of generating electric power. But I'm going to tell you, it's a lot. It's a lot. I didn't know all this. I didn't. Okay, let's see. Hidden figures extends beyond the Apollo mission. Black women also made huge contrib contributions to the various fields of science. That's true. The actual women portrayed in the film Hidden Figures are Dorothy Vaughn, Kathleen Johnson, and Mary Jackson. Gifted scientific minds, these three women were integrational in the developing the math between NASA's first successful space mission. Their legacy continues with practically applications from modern black women like Dr. Patricia Bath. She is the first black woman to complete an ophthalmology residence. Whatever. Patricia is also the first black female doctor to get a medical patient. Her invention, the laser probe, uses laser technology to more precisely and less painful than cataract to treat to treat cataracts. Valerie Thompson originally worked at NASA as a data analysis. She oversaw the Landsat, Landsat program creation and conceived real-time computer data systems. Lord, y'all women. Y'all women, boy. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Patricia is also the first black female doctor to go to get a medical patient. Her invention, I already read that. Valerie Thompson original, originally worked at NASA as a data analysis. She, she oversaw the Landsat program. I already read that too. My bad. <laughs> Though low tech, this early 3D prototype used concave mirrors in both ends to transmit and produce optical illusions images. The device was first used to observe Halley's Comet and space events, but Valerie's technology also appeared in many modern televisions and other devices too. Due to the unselfishness and intelligent design, NASA still uses this kind of technology today. Anna J. Easley has spent over three decades of her career working with NASA. She is one of the first black co computer programmers to work in uh, alter alternative energy technology, technologies, energy, conservative system, and a launch system. This time, they were 2,500 employees under NASA, but only easily, and three other were black. In her 34 years of serving, easily was literally transferred but never received any promotion. Man, that's messed up. She deserved a promotion. She do. She deserved a promotion. After everything she, she didn't do, man, that's crazy. Black inventors used automotive as early as the 1800s. Automation isn't reserved, reserved for the 20th and 21st century. Excuse me for yawning, but I'm tired. Anyway, automotive it isn't reserved for the 20th and the 21st century. John Ernest Patton, an automotive shoemaker, as early as 1883, due to his design, the machine streamlined the process of connecting the leather to each part of the sole with rapid efficiency. The Machine could make up to 700 pairs of shoes per day. Wow, that's deep. This drove the cast of shoe pr production down dramatically 
drastically. It also increased shoe availability and decreased shoe cost. Despite this unfortunate, unfortunate, his unfortunate death at only 37, his invention re revolutionized shoemaking. It was also a critical first step towards our future of automation. But Jan wasn't the only black inventor who saw the ways of automation could make life easier. Alexandra Miles gave the world the incredible gift of automatic electric doors. George T. Sampson gave us the mechanical dryer in 1802 and shed propel, propeller in 1885. Inventors Rick Spice gave us the automatic gear shift in 1932. He also conceived many other inventions like the multiple barrel machine gun and beer cap tab, key tap, and automatic safety brake. But more favorite inventors is on this list has the Elijah McCoy. I believe this is going to be this last one I read. Man, this is really killing me. A certified mechanic engineer, Eliza worked primarily on railroad projects. He developed a me method of automatically trained lubrication using a lubrication cup. This cup dripped oil on the right location at the upper time. He invented was his his invention was so popular that many people tried to copy it. It has been suggested that he is, that this is the original of the phrase the real McCoy. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I didn't know that. Ugh. I didn't know that. Let me see who in the chat. What y'all talking about in the chat? That go down in the DM. Okay, Andrew family. AMSR, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to see everybody up in here, man. I tell you, it's good, it's good. Hold on, no, let's keep going. What the heck? Burn this time up. Let me see. A black inventor is responsible for several things you use daily. Necessity is the mother of invention, but simplicity is key. Black inventors, key Lord, Lord Ray and Sarah Boone recognized this. They invented the dustpan and the ironing board, respectively. Mary and Mildred Davidson invented the toilet paper holder. Man, that's what I'm talking about. The toilet paper home. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Philip Downey invented the street mailbox in field. In fact, black inventors, inventors conceive many things we use on a daily basis. Family with traffic lights, I mean, well, familiar with traffic lights and the cycle between red, yellow, and green. The credit of the additional of the yield or yellow light goes to Garrett Morgan. He also developed a gas mask prototype called a safety hood in 1914. Due to racial tension in the southern U.S., Garrett hired a white actor to play the inventor, inventor while Garrett himself acted as, a, as the sidekick. He demonstrated the infinity of his invention, seeing ro robust sales numbers thanks to his strategy. As a result of his efficiency, it was developed into gas masks used in World War I to protect soldiers from gas warfare. Alex H. Parker revolutionized the way we heat our living or working space. Before her invention of the National Gas Heating Furnace, 
wood burning furnaces were the only way to do it. As a result of her preliminary designs, other inventors dis demise modern thermostat technology. Why, why is it when they're reading all this stuff, why is it when we invent something and then people just be trying to tear it down, like take it from me? It's our idea. Why come they just can't see that? They just, I don't get it, man. They see us, they see us taking 10 steps forward. They try, they knock us back down 20 times, man. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I think I'm gonna end it off on that because that reading is getting to me. Trust me. I'm not a good reader. I'm a video man. Going live has been a good experience for me. I love it. I just don't, I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I don't know. Let me see what's going on in the chizad. <sighs> see y'all talking among y'all self. Hello, well. More of this. Okay, okay. Cool. What's up, Alvin? Thank you for coming into the channel. Goodness, okay. Hmm. Wolf with Dean up in the crib. <laughs> uh, gotta love it, brother, man. Gotta love him. All right, GG. Gotta love y'all. Gotta love y'all. Man, I love y'all to death, man. I don't know what I'd do, man. I don't know what I'd do. Y'all make my day. Y'all make my day. DJ, I don't know. Let me find one. Let me find one more. Let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna read this one. Let me see, and it doesn't stop there. Okay, and it doesn't stop there. I skip one. I'll save it for more. Modern day black inventors, as they always have, come in the form of engineers, scientists, and young people. Many black women in tech are shipping the future of computer science. Now, this name right here, don't shoot the messenger because I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Get, let's see, G, G10 Georgia Radio, I don't know what it is. A 12 year old Colorado student invented a lead detector in response to the Flint, Michigan water crisis. A 10-year-old Bishop Curry V invented a device to help prevent infinite death in hot cars. With great examples throughout Black history to shine the way Black inventors would, would keep making advances. Who knew that? Y'all you got young people up in here doing adventures. How come I can't think of what? Uh, let's see. Is that it? Get out of here. Let me see about this lead thing. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can pull up about the 12 year old and done. Let's see. The people in Flint, Michigan are still suffering through the aftermath of the ongoing water crisis that left the city without clean without clean drinking water for over a year. And one young scholar is looking, wait a minute, wait a minute. Holla, give it to me now. I got something blocking it, but I can't read it. Trying to make me sign up for Essence. I don't want to sign up for that. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, <laughs> Colorado Middle St 
student, middle school student. I'm gonna say G because I G R because I can't pronounce that. I don't know who that is. If it'll let me play it, it won't even let me play it. They said something. Boy, technology sucks. Let me see if I can do it again. Okay, Colorado Mini student GR is just 12 years old, but she's already on track to make a major contribution to scientists with the invention of her new lead detector. The invention won G, GR, $25,000 in the title, and the title of America's Top Young Scientist in the 2017 Young Scientist Challenge. Boy, these kids, I give it to the women and the kids. That, uh, us black, now black men, we do that stuff, but as far as the women and the kids, I don't, you know, I, I give them, I give them the most, the most respect because Hey, they coming up. They coming up. They doing their thing. I get it, man. They doing their thing. Man. You can't can't knock it. All you can do is celebrate it. Okay, the preteen shirt. The preteen shirt. Uh, where is it at? How her concern for the residents of Flint sparked her idea in for developing the lead detector. Imagine living. Day in and day out, drinking contaminated water with diagnosed with dangerous substances with lead. She said while speaking during her presentation at the Young Scientist Challenge, introducing the ways to use fast, accurate, portable, and inexpensive device to detect lead uh, lead in water. Gr said in her presentation for the Young. Scientist Challenge. She won the national competition for her invention. According to CBS News, GR device will allow for the detection of lead within seconds using carbon molecules and a mobile act or ad. Previously, the procedure for detecting lead involved sending samples to a lab that then took days to process resort. Our water quality, just as important as doctor's appointments or dentist appointments, Gio added. Her teacher, we call her SB because she got one of those funny names too. SB <laughs> is hopeful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is hopeful that her invention will soon make its way to the market. I am so confident that she will be able to take it to the market if we keep providing her help. SB said, it's, I think that's her teacher. Her teacher said, describing GR as a risk taker who isn't afraid to fail. <sighs> who knew? I'm done, but who knew? Who knew though? I mean, like I said, these kids, man, if they got an idea, Support their idea. Support it. Yeah, pick up. I gotta pick up my snack. But <laughs> but support that idea because you never know where that idea is gonna go. You don't. You never know um, how far it will go. Or how far it. You know. You never know what their ideas. They can sit. I, I've had kids sit back and tell me stuff, and I'll be like, "What are you talking about?" And then later on down the road, they didn't, they didn't came across something that, that's going to help the, help the people, or whatever. <sighs> well, I have enjoyed this today. I appreciate all y'all coming out to my live. Um, trying to get better, you know, and do different things and bring different things. Now. Tomorrow I have to find, you know, I keep finding stuff, so I just I just read it. I just soon read it. I'm trying to fix a way where I can show pictures, like, for example, if I wanted to show the first person I the first person I talked about, but the only difference is this is ring light. 
His ring light is so bright, you can tell it in my eyes. It's so bright, I gotta figure out a way how to tune it down so what I gotta do. What is it? We'll say. Oh, love you, brother. <laughs> it blesses. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that. I tell you, I appreciate all y'all. All y'all. Y'all, I love y'all here. Y'all, y'all got my utmost attention to uh, you know. But like I said, if I can find a way how to show it, like I have a tablet and I show y'all, but see the reflection of the ring light is what's inflecting it. And I got to figure out how to tone it down. I don't know how to tone it down. I'll figure it out later on the day. Well, I'll take it out later on the day. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this live. I'm going to go ahead and give me some grubby grub grub. You know, um, having hot dogs tonight, you know, something light, nothing too. Nothing too heavy. I just don't. I just don't feel like it today, Friday. I gotta get ready for game night later on. Woo, woo. Gotta bring my A game tonight. I'm gonna bring some smack. You might have to get ready. I might get dragged. I might get dragged. But I'm a smack talking. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring that smack to the table. Yeah, y'all get ready for the night. What's up, holy, holy Spitfire? <laughs> Spitfire fall. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. You ready for the night? Who ready for the night? Put it in the chat. Who ready for tonight? I'm coming. I'm coming with. I'm coming with everything I got. Whether I win or lose, win or lose, I'm bringing that. I'm bringing that smack. I'm gonna smack it all tonight. You might as well get ready. Y'all get ready. I'm gonna bring my A game. I don't know who I'm against. I think it was Ariel. He might as well get ready. Flat ball, basketball, Terrence. He might as well get ready. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Might as well get ready. I'm going to flake that basketball. I'm going to deflate it. I'm smacking talking today. <laughs> He's going to need to buy him a football. He's going to have to buy basketball. <laughs> hey, go ahead and buy basketball. Anyway, I'm coming with a vengeance tonight. Like they say, watch your back. Watch your back. I'm coming in with the choo choo. Choo 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 Oh, man. I just love myself. Well, I love all y'all. And I'll see y'all tonight at 10 o'clock, I think. Um, and y'all have a good night. I appreciate all y'all coming in, listening to me, listening to a little bit of the black history that's going on. Um, I love all of y'all. See y'all tonight. God bless. Remember, you're too blessed to be stressed. Peace.